Assalamualaikum. Good morning. Is everyone here? Waalaikumsalam. Good morning, sir. Waalaikumsalam. Good morning, sir. Alright. Okay, so uh, I hope you guys have a great mid semester break. And then I guess we'll be able to continue with our lab. Lah. Hold on, let me set up my OBS. It's okay. Okay, uh, <clears throat> we'll start. Eh? And the first thing that I would like to announce is I'll be checking your attendance shortly. Uh, so please make sure to uh, take your ni lah, apa nama, your future when you link. Though. So don't forget. And uh, just, to, just a reminder, this course is 70% uh, uh, your career mark is from lab work. So having uh, full attendance is going to help you. Uh, so therefore, uh, just take good conscience lah, against your attendance record. And of course, submission pun satu hal. So make sure submit everything. For those who have any issues regarding your PCs ke apa ke, make sure to resolve it and try to adhere towards the due date of submission. I had a student who told me that they are unable to submit according to the timeline, which is not acceptable eh? because this subject sepatutnya Kalau dah siap lab, petang tu dah kena submit. But I, uh, I, I consider you guys ada kerja lain lagi apa lagi. So that's why I bagi seminggu. Tapi janganlah dia beri per, perha nak betis pula eh. macam mana ayat dia tu. So, trust me, I'm I'm lenient compared to the other lecturers lah. Yang uh, fakulti lain, apa fakulti lain pula. Uh, cawangan lain ke. So, I'm already been giving you time, so make sure to adhere towards the timeline. Eh? So I, I need to be stern on that because uh, I myself, when I went for interview for my professional engineer punya interview, which is coming along, tapi hari tu baru last week lah kot, saya baru jumpa IR tu. The punya comment on graduates, not just you guys, eh, not just UITM, but the whole IPTA in Malaysia is about attitude. It's not about no technical knowledge. It's not about, it's not about what you call that. Um, uh, your, I mean, forefront apa? Kebolehan bercakap pun satu hal lah in English what not. But your attitude pun is the. Dah saya dah jumpa Sam ni eh. Just this Sam alone eh. Just this Sam alone. Uh, because I'm involved with your accreditation. Uh, yang land accreditation tu, I'm the head of uh, yang menggerakkan accreditation when you work so all the industrial panel yang kami uh, engage which is around seven people from TNB, oil and gas from CRIM semua comment on recent graduate punya attitude of course ada plus and minus lah mana yang positif yang positif tu Alhamdulillah that means korang boleh multitask apa semua it's a good thing compared to others ni tapi kalau engineering ni sepatutnya you guys kita as an engineer is called hard knock so that means tak mudah tak mudah break so some surprisingly generation I'm not being a millennial ke apa ke gen Y ke gen X no it's about being a human being don't apa try to hormat other people punya timeline lah eh? especially your bosses uh, and apparently this is a big issue uh, from industrial practitioner punya point of view uh, i'm not talking about you guys specifically but this is where uh, saya kena apa nama highlight lah for you guys because hasil my hasil of my industrial survey this is what happens across all uh, local graduates so, bila orang cakap uh, kenapa certain employer uh, prefer graduate overseas tu, uh, this is one of the things lah. Timeline, I mean, kalau dengan bangsa lain, kita, especially kalau dengan white, maybe kita punya mentality penjajah ke apa ke, kita boleh pula timeline apa, dah bawa kereta baik-baik, 
apa hormat orang bagi dek kita ikut tapi dengan our own country punya ni kita asam lewa je tak boleh lah macam tu so i am taking this opportunity to uh, sebab dah jadi dah pun uh, dah bagi betis nak pula peha uh, so saya kena be stern on this lah and let you guys know try to change your your attitude trust me whatever that you feeling right now apa ODL ke apa ke trust me the older generation pun dah rasa uh, for you guys rasa berjalan tu susah uh, yang uh, saya punya mak cik sendiri pun itu setahun yang saya waktu dia buat degree pun berjalan kaki juga daripada section 2 Syalam tu naik bukit masuk ke fakulti dia dekat apa nama computer science tu atau bukit tu uh, pun berjalan juga zaman tu zaman saya dululah for you guys uh, at least Berjalan juga. I'm not saying berjalan tu senang ke susah ke. No. Trust me. Whatever hardship that you are facing right now, my generation, my older generation, the older, older, older generations pun dah rasa. So, jangan fikir apa yang ada depan awak. Because we only know what we only know. Kita hanya tahu apa yang kita tahu. Yeah? So, uh, instead of uh, complain benda yang kita boleh control, control benda yang kita boleh control. Okay, so that's it. Try to adhere towards timeline. Tepati masa, ya. Eh? Okay, so uh, for today's punya, cukup mobil bagi ni. Apa, tazkirah, ya. Eh? Hmm. But it is a very critical issues. Kalau korang nak uh, be move on to orang kata, this is something I learn jugalah. Uh, compared saya yang pemalas ni. Saya ni pemalas, eh. Tapi pemalas-pemalas saya pun dapat juga PhD. Tak compared to somebody yang for me, uh, dia tak ada PhD tapi I think he is more bagus lah lagi pada saya. Uh, cepat uh, kalau dia masuk dia masuk oil and gas, uh, petronas lah specifically. Orang lain uh, yang sebaya dengan masuk sekali satu batch dengan dia, uh, masih lagi engineer biasa or maybe kuat pun uh, apa ni lah, bit, um, not senior engineer lah tapi bawa uh, bawa sikit. Dia baru dua tahun kerja dah naik sini engineer. Because he take it seriously. Not because dia pandai sangat ke apa tak. Disiplin tu. Balik kerja, oh, kerja macam biasa kerja. Balik kerja, dia buat notes. Apa yang dia dah belajar hari tu. And surprisingly, you can still find his uh, work punya reference. Dia dah quit eh. Dia dah totally financially independent. Bukan maksudnya dia jual barang. Dia, uh, dia apa investment punya orang lah sekarang ni. So, that said, there's nothing stopping you. If let's say you rasa, ah tak gunalah belajar engineering ni, baik aku buat bisnes jadi kaya. No, there's no such thing as that. Kawan saya tu, uh, dah sampai Australia, habis belajar, uh, scholar you Petronas. Uh, kerja dengan Petronas 2 tahun ke 3 tahun saya tak ingat. Lama lah juga, uh, 5 tahun kot. Sampai dapat senior engineer. And you have to understand, eh, senior engineer Petronas gaji around almost 8, 10k. I'm not sure. Saya tak, tak kena Petronas. And boleh quit. Boleh quit, boleh full time uh, apa nama? survive uh, sara anak, bin, anak lima orang, bini seorang uh, with uh, dengan all the proper ni lah. Uh, office dekat Bangsa South, apa BM. So financially freedom lah. So even though they're engineering, still boleh, uh, boleh kaya juga sebenarnya. It's just a matter of discipline. So, saya sendiri pun, I may not look like much, my second car pun kereta apa je, tapi I am, uh, you could call me millionaire juga lah. So, it's not about being engineering tu, maksudnya jadi apa, orang miskin ke apa tak. It's about your mindset. And I want you to change your mindset from now. Try to think outside of the box sikit. Belajar ni, belajar je, habiskan je lah. Tak ada benda pun. Uh, it's just anggap dia sebagai training dia. Okay, uh, tak sekiranya lagi sekali. Uh, kita cukup lah. Okay, uh, so continue dengan uh, our lecture. Okay, just one thing. I think it's a good thing that you guys know. Saya kerja as a lecturer is untuk kelangsungan hidup. Uh, so, I may not be as a lecturer. I may not be, uh, uh, apa nama? gaji yang, I mean kalau B40 tu you have to find a way lah to get out of B40 but 
once you reach M40, eh, M, B40, M40 lah kan? Ha. Kalau once you reach M40, there is actually a way for you to become a millionaire. Cuma, I uh, have to be sabar and jangan kelang kabut join scam lah. Saya tak main forex, saya tak main. I play with properties, I play with stocks, I play with uh, businesses. So, benda tu, even though I'm a lecturer, pun still boleh buat. Yang tak boleh buat, bila you keep on pergi overseas apa semua lah. Uh, tu memang susah sikit lah. Okay. But it's not going to stop you lah. Okay, so uh, now kita continue with uh, experiment lima. Uh, five, which is cloud and drive. So I'm still reverting back to the talking Malay. Eh? Sambil -sambil tu. Sorry, I try to keep on speaking English to practice. Okay, uh, everyone's have able to create. Is there anyone having problems setting up their account with the Google storage ke Google apa? One drive ke apa ke? Tinkercad. Anybody has any issue with the uh, any kind of this, uh, any of the software that requires you to log in and whatnot. So far. Okay, I appreciate some feedback. No, sir. So far, so good. But uh, just a tip, just in case some of you who are too shy to uh, to voice out, make sure you log everything using your email UITM, which is uh, given to you uh, in this area here. Uh, in case in the future you won't be, you don't want to have these uh, facilities in your computer on your laptop, personal laptop. At the very least, you can bypass lah once you graduated from UATM. Okay, so for this experiment, it's on cloud and drive. Basically, uh, the reason why I'm doing ODL is because it's it requires internet connection and it's just setting up a what nama, online account. So rather than asking uh, I mean, my, the technician to set up the lab and whatnot, I guess we'll just do it this time around using ODL lah. and since I can record this, I think this is much more effective learning material uh, tools lah, using uh, online presence. Okay, so the objective here is to, I think most of you have already known how to use Google Drive, OneDrive for those, I think Google Drive is quite a common usage. Lah. I think uh, this uh, lab isn't go isn't going to be that um, critical given that most of you have uh, quite a familiarization so therefore but the 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 point being in this lab is more on uh, synchronization between one work prototyping design of your circuit and then putting it on your on the internet for you to access anywhere and then as well as using python with the data that you have created to come up with a value with a result sorry so it's not about saving copy paste and uh, put it in your google drive no it's about synchronization so that is what is trying to elaborate here lah. so the objective here is for you to uh, know what is cloud software what is cloud storage and cloud computing as a modern and up-to-date engineering tools? Previously, uh, when it was my age, I had to carry around uh, tons of uh, young safe icon. For those, I uh, think your generation wouldn't be able to see it in your lifetime, except for image and uh, internet. But uh, I have to carry that safe icon. It's what we call as floppy disks. Uh, this is when we are studying. So this uh, floppy disk, eh, which is a uh, safe icon, eh, safe icon eh, it's a uh, 1.44 MB size. Maknanya, it can only carry word documents around. Uh, if it's not too long, uh, PDF lah, senang cerita PDF, kalau ada PDF. Um, not more than uh, 100 
Uh, so uh, it's still a lot, but uh, no, not no more than 50 PDF files. So that means uh, you can't uh, you can't store music, you can't store video on your floppy disk. So if I were to carry my uh, coursework punya uh, material, it would took maybe one semester to uh, at least 10, 20 diskettes to carry around for each uh, semester. Back then, I punya tak best ni dulu. So and then there's no internet, so that means I if I forgot my diskette at home, and I was doing my lab work, chances are I'm I will not be able to save the work, and I have to redo it uh, once I've set up appointment with the lab technician. Uh, so that's why I said earlier, whatever hardship that you feel right now, I also uh, I mean my generation, the older generation also had faced it. Maybe a little bit different than yours, but the, the hardship is still there. Okay, and then uh, bayangkan, uh, if I have submit everything, either I pan it down or I have to print it using a printer yang kalau korang tengok kat kedai tu yang klik 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 tu punya lah lama nak print tu. Uh, and then out of ten, maybe eight je yang akan print cantik. Yang two tu most probably will have to reprint and and you have to remember kertas printer zaman dulu bukan A4 yang ada lubang-lubang tepi tu macam receipt kedai tu ha. so that special paper kena beli back then is quite uh, mahal lah for students eh. so nowadays uh, in that sense in, uh, engineering punya tools dah become much easier not to say uh, the challenges is still there but uh, in terms of data or transmission, the data storage and whatnot, it has become much uh, easier by the introduction of cloud software, cloud storage, and cloud computing. Okay, by the way, uh, on camera. I want to make sure that I'm not talking uh, sorang sorang, and this is recorded. So if there is audit, uh, I want to make sure that everyone it's being shown. Eh? Everyone is participating in class and not just me talking alone. So make sure to turn on your camera. Okay, good. Three of you have already turned it on. All right, four, five, all right. Okay, and then uh, make sure everyone, sambil sambil saya cakap, saya tengok juga. Okay, and then to apply cloud software, cloud storage, and cloud computing to solve engineering problems. So, uh, one of the benefit of uh, living in this today's society, where as an engineering student, everything, almost everything, has been put online. Macam dulu saya nak buat circuit, saya kena beli breadboard lima enam biji, pasang resistor ke apa. Kalau tak meletup, alhamdulillah, dua breadboard dah cukup. Kalau tak boleh, uh, kena ni lah. Zaman tu uh, boleh nak beli yang breadboard yang tangga-tangga loh. Apa nama? Saya lupa lah. Breadboard lah basically. Nah. Uh, tapi mahal. So, typically student will buy the yang lubang-lubang tu order siap-siap and then test. Kalau salah, beli lagi, buat lagi. So, it's try and error lah. Whereby korang dah tak payah beli apa-apa dah. Dah boleh pakai the cloud software ni untuk test circuit design korang, whether it works or not. So, again, uh, uh, my challenge, my generation's many challenges are different than yours, but still, there is a challenge. And then, to understand the limitation of cloud software, cloud storage, and cloud computing, uh, okay, there is, of course, some limit, but I think uh, it's more on storage size, and also not all uh, equipment has been properly defined in the library of the software. So, uh, other limitation pun ada juga lah, but I think that's the main uh, limitation of having internet punya ni. So, nak tak nak, kalau tak ada software apa, resistor yang you nak try, and tak ada di, di online, so chances are you have to buy physically punya ni lah. Okay, and then uh, what requirement that you're going to use for today's punya lab is just your laptop installed with Google Chrome and of course internet connection eh, because we are using internet. Okay, yang cloud, apa, theoretical cloud and drive, cloud software, cloud storage ni baca lah sendiri. I think uh, 
it's more i think for your generation pun dah biasa dah cloud and drive ni basically upload everything to internet tak ada everything store i mean there is some of it stored offline version dekat korang punya laptop file-file korang tapi all the works is being done in the internet Cloud software pula macam services provided by the internet company uh, Internet company pula, apa nama? Software company uh, To help you with So basically they create a software that you can you guys can use without installing Cloud storage is where you can store your all your local file instead of low, put it and being limited by your hard drive Everything is you can now put it on their server So that means you are you don't have to buy extra additional apa, hard disk or SSD lah for you to play around with. And then about computing, uh, where all the calculation, all the simulation, all the uh, works is being done online. That means their server will handle all the calculation and whatnot. Your computer just send the data, define what the algorithm is. That's it. Macam Google Collab yang kita dah buat hari tu lah Yang Python kelas Python, lab Python hari tu Okay so to prepare to, uh, You have to make sure that you're logged in To your UITM email So this one I won't be Showing you because I'm already Set up my uh, Email UITM via Google Chrome and on my PC so I can't show you this I, I this, Basically this is just you logging into your office uh, ni lah. So uh, we can bypass this uh, preparation It's more on you yourself to do it on your own So make sure to this uh, This section here I don't have access to uh, your computer So I can't show you show, show the steps lah. But basically uh, this should be like uh, Logging into your Gmail and whatnot So I don't think it's going to be an issue for you Okay, and then Google activation, again, the same thing. Uh, I can't show it to you because I've already set up all my email, UITM and whatnot. And besides, it's just you logging into your Gmail account. Uh, if you have problems logging into your Gmail, I think you have a bigger problem than that lah sepatutnya. Maksudnya awak tak pandai ke computer lah kot. This is, I think for your generation, macam makan nasi lauk kari je lah ni. Uh, my generation dulu ya kena step by step but for your generation this is a given eh? so i won't be going into this just make sure you do it on your own okay now we're going into cloud software uh, this one i i'll i'll show it to you but actually if you do it on your own pun sebenarnya senang je think okay it's just a matter yang i think the going to be a problem is just you getting account with autocad Because if I'm not mistaken, it's going to take you one day, two days for them to get back to you to give you the the link or the the pass, uh, the registration code. So for me, I've already done this. Uh, let me share with you my my uh, dashboard. Hold on, yeah. Where's my OBS? Please. Give me a second. Eh? Uh, I thought I've set it up, but apparently not. Is it Windows Capture? Yep. All right. Give me a second while I resize. Okay, so I've already uh, did, not this semester, I actually done this quite A long time ago when I did my prototyping for my robots but I've already had an account with AutoCAD so I can just log into my Tinkercad and it brought me directly to the dashboard but uh, for this section here I think it's just uh, for you to create an account with your UITM email so uh, they ask you to create a personal account for me I'll just click educators since I'm an educator but for students uh, I haven't had the chance to use it but uh, they ask you to put a to create a personal account so just take the blue the, the most bottom blue blue banner there and then sign in with your Google account which is your email UITM and then that should be uh, sepatutnya lah, if I recall correctly uh, then you should be able to get into Tinkercad punya dashboard So I hope nobody had 
issues with logging into the Tinkercad because uh, when I, if I recall correctly, when I did my the first time I logged into Tinkercad, it's almost instantaneously. You don't have to wait for registration, but correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, um, in the dashboard, what you need to do is to click circuits and then create new circuits. Like for me, I've already done a few things here. Did I? No, this is another, another the, uh, other persons. So create new circuit, then you'll be able to see this uh, these windows here. So if you want to get into other components, just explore this drop down menu. Then uh, if you click all, everything will be listed down there. So this software is actually very good for you for your mini project. Uh, sorry, your final year project. This is where you can test your circuit. But remember. Eh, there's a limitation here. That means if you want to uh, set uh, a sound, you won't produce any sound. If you want to simulate uh, IR detection, you won't be able to do that because uh, it, it, nobody has created, uh, what you call that, a library for simulation of uh, RF being cut off. And I, I think wireless transmission and whatnot physically, that one you have to uh, use your own creativity lah to simulate how it works. Uh, because that's the one of the limitation of uh, Tinkercad because uh, some certain operation of equipment may not be as what you expected. There are some other, lim other limitation, lah, but I think uh, most FYP students will have that issue. They they say to me, uh, for me, uh, for my previous final year project student, they will tell me that they have done simulation, but it doesn't work. And when I look into their circuits, apparently what they meant by doesn't work is that their RFID, like, for example, doesn't cut off when uh, there's a water coming in. Of course, how can you simulate water from Tinkercad? You can't do that. Uh, so that's why you need to be smarter. Lah. Just use on off switch uh, just to simulate whether the Tinkercad, no, sorry, the RFID, the RF, the, what you call it, infrared has been cut off and whatnot. Just use uh, on off switch provided that sensor works as intended. Okay. So uh, this is the uh, interface uh, for Tinkercad as, as you open the, the first page. So this is the top toolbar. The work plane is where this is where you put your icon, your circuit and whatnot. And this is your components panel. So they want us to create the following circuit by selecting basics. We are currently in basics, this one. And then from the component panel, then drag and drop the components as shown in figure 5.13 below. So they want to use LED, just drag it there. Name, color, biarkan. Then one resistor and then another battery. Another one is the battery source. Let's put it on the work plane. Senang dia. So for each component, properties will be displayed as shown to change the properties, uh, change the properties of each component based on table 5.1. So for LED, name is, you can just double click the icon and you can change any, any of the properties there. Lah. So for res resistance, they want to use 22 ohms. So if we double click the resistance, so we put that 22, now it's kilo ohm, we change it, we change the properties to ohm. So 22 ohm. So battery is battery. Lah. Then connect each component by hovering your mouse over each component. A red box will be displayed to indicate the polarity of the component. Click the red box to move your mouse to another red box. So let's say, for example, now if you look at the circuit here, the kaki yang bengkok ni, I'm not yang tak saya lupa dah, LED. Saya selalu pasang dia dah lama tinggal. Uh, connected to the resistance and resistance goes to the red point of the battery. The battery goes back to the uh, kaki, kaki katot. Uh, not. Katot. So, yeah. So, yang bengkok ni, anot. So, you just uh, click the red 
uh, box on the leg of the anode and then put it into the resistance connected to the red box there one link okay and then continue with your resistance put it like this if you want to make it more cleaner i guess just play uh, re just relocate the icon so the other one negative point of the battery you can either connect it like this back directly but for me i like to do things um apa, saya punya OS, apa, ods apa? yang obsessive compulsive disorder uh, ocd uh, ocd i'll just one uh, left click once here and then i put it here another left click another left click and then connect to the sorry so if you press escape, everything will be reset. So you have to do it again. But you can't go back. Okay, and then make sure to click on the cathode. And now everything is uh, connected. So maybe it looks too small. It's not clear. So if you want to zoom in, just press control and then scroll your mouse. Now it will be bigger. And if you want to move it around, move it around, just use your wheel mouse button, press it down, the middle mouse, uh, the scroll mouse, oh, and then uh, move it around. Macam uh, biasa lah. In, I guess this con kind of control is more or less what other software is also being used. In fact, our lab 7 and lab 6, AutoCAD pun macam ni juga. Nak scroll, nak roll, nak connect. So, uh, try to be familiar lah with this control scheme that means a uh, scroll wheel do to move the icon around left click to uh, and control to zoom in sorry kalau pakai scroll mouse uh, and then alternate or left click to select or deselect or whatever nanti kita tengok lah okay so siap dah uh, step 7 now we want to simulate so you can click start simulation at the top of the start button is the circuit simulation if the connected if the connections are performed correctly led will light up as shown in the figure 5.16 okay ni dia tutup kalau awak tekan start simulation sepatutnya dia menyala so kita test kita test betul tak saya punya ni so tu menyala nampak ada color dia kalau saya stop tak ada color start ada color nampak senang eh? Uh, this is Tinkercad. Uh, it's good for basic uh, circuit testing. That means if you construct a circuit that is quite uh, basic for your component, you should be able to use it yeah, to test whether your circuit works. And then uh, you and then baru you buat your circuit. So uh, if you want, and then kita continue. Semua orang boleh dapat this uh, LED menyala ni. Once you click start simulation. Dapat saya. Dapat saya. Hmm. Dapat saya. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So, senang eh. Nanti ke cat ni. Okay, now they want us to stop the simulation and then they want to use multimeter to see how much the voltage is being given to the LED and provided to the LED lah. So we need to find the multimeter. Where's the multimeter? Uh, this one, the last one here for for my screen. I'm not sure for you guys. So multimeter should be put. Uh, okay, drag and drop. Change the mode to amperage. So now it's currently mode is in voltage. Now we change to amperage lah. Basically to measure current. So to measure current. Uh, this one, I want you to remember, zaman saya dulu pun, saya belajar, saya daripada sains tulen, saya tak tahu, ialah compared to kawan saya yang masuk sekolah teknik, uh, teknik, typically they have, they already know, selenga-selenga kawan saya tu pun, dia tahu, nak test current macam mana, nak test voltage macam mana, saya tak tahu, so uh, over the years, saya belajar, nak test current, you have to put it, to put the multimeter in, series nak test voltage eh tadi voltage ke current kalau current series voltage parallel so this one you have to put it in series that means you have to bypass the resistance ni lah so to bypass the resistance you have to put it in like t 
is is it connected? No. Okay, negative point. Can uh, one click and then can put that click. Okay. Ya, yeah, so ini saya nak connect ni. Saya pun lama dah lupa dah. Oh, connectkan kaki ni, sorry. Okay, ha. Uh, basically, you can't tap directly to the wire. I forgot, eh? sorry, ini dah lama tak buat. You have to tap to the icon, to the component. Baru dia boleh, uh, kaki komponen tu baru dia boleh ni lah. So macam tadi saya buat terus directly ke he, uh, to here. So if you want to make it more uh, pleasing to the eyes, I'll uh, just click any of the line here. For example here, I can uh, make uh, the correct ni lah. So nampak cantik sikit. Okay, so that's how you connect your multimeter. So kalau parallel, if I want to use parallel punya ni, so I would what I would do is instead of here, I would tap it. Uh, sepatutnya this is parallel ni. Kalau nak tak series, saya kena ini pergi sini, ini pergi sini. I think this is wrong. Uh, okay, you have to remember manual lab ni, dia sengaja create macam ni. Untuk confusekan awak, untuk awak berfikir. So, this is actually parallel connection. So, series supposedly to be like this. And I want you to think why I'm saying this is series. Ah, This is series. Tadi tu parallel. Silap ni bukan sini. Sini. Ah, tadi parallel, ni series. If you want to measure current, you have to put it in series. If you want to measure voltage, you have to put it in parallel. So this one is series. So start the simulation. Ah, so that's the current MA. Now what happened if I stop and then redo the parallel version? I see. So different bit readings. Ah, so this simulation, uh, this uh, lab manual, saja nak test your understanding. And but for me. In case, uh, especially korang yang tak pernah masuk lab, tak pernah buat, uh, I assume lah eh, kalau saya salah tu, uh, maafkan saya lah. Tapi, I would assume most of you who haven't had the chance to conduct uh, electrical lab. So, saya tak nak salahkan awak lah. Your given circumstances ni memang tak boleh nak cakap apa. Disebabkan keadaan eh, MCO and what not. So, this is parallel because multimeter ni awak bayangkan, uh, saya tak boleh conteng sini. Uh, macam mana saya nak ya? Oh, ni. Uh, pin. Sekejap ya. Eh? Saya. Ah, okay, pin ya. Eh? So, kalau tengok circuit ni. It's more like this. Uh, this is your LED. Eh, sorry, macam LED. This is your LED. So, sini. And then, this is your resistance. And this is your battery. So if you put it multimeter parallel to the resistance, it would look like this. China symbol multimeter, saya lupa dah. Current, current, current. Ah, this is parallel. So if you want to put it in series, it should be looking like this. Ni series. Multimeter dia dekat atas resistance tu. Or dekat atas ke dekat bawah ke. Terpulang lah. Saya letak kat atas. And, but uh, for you if you want to put it at the bottom pun boleh. Provided korang kena explain lah kenapa. Apa, kenapa yang uh, ni salah. Kenapa current uh, voltage ni apa. Emitter uh, multimeter saya letak atas. 
tak bawah pun boleh sebenarnya tapi value akan be difference lah. So this is a, this shouldn't be A, this should be V. Kalau if you want to measure voltage for each component tu macam voltage drop kat sini berapa? Voltage drop kat sini berapa? Ah ini source lah, source memang voltage drop dia dia lah. Kalau 5 volt, 5 volt lah. So uh, this should be your series. Ni yang dalam lab manual ni sengaja nak uh, the lab manual creator tu saja nak confuse kan. Uh, so that call number fikir. As well as lecturer juga, juga lah. Kalau lecturer tu ikut dia juga, salah lecturer tu lah eh. So kita back sebab kita nak tunjuk the actual one series. Eh, oh leta ini. Saya kena buat balik lah. So this should be your circuit. You should be able to get 27.1. So let's say kita just for the sake of discussion. Tadi saya cakap bila letak bawah. So kita letak series kat bawah. So that means bawah tu is after your resistance. Will it change? Nope, still the same. Okay, saya nak awak explain kenapa dalam lab sheet awak nanti uh, why kat atas uh, sebab saya, ni saya dah suap awak eh so, I, I've already feed you a spoon on actually this is wrong which is this is parallel now it's series so now I want to you for you to give me something back in your lab report I want to see why you put here 27.1 you put here pun 27.1 padahal dah ada resistance if you recall the basics electronics punya electrical punya understanding anything lalu resistance sepatutnya kurang why current kat sini sama pula i want you to think about that eh okay and then uh, export okay observe the value uh, include in the lab sheet and also i want you to put your discussion there in your lab um, lab sheet tu why value the 7.1 ni sama Okay, and then export the circuit by clicking export button on the top right. So, ah, see, this one export, download, and then put it uh, any on your ni lah, any kind of uh, folder that you want to use. Uh, my advice is under E250 so that korang tak pening. Saya tak perlu nak submit kepada siapa-siapa so saya letak di dalam download ni. Uh, which is part A, lab 5. And this is my name up to you if you want to use your own uh, file name so keep the brd file for part b of this laboratory okay and then uh, use multimeter to measure amperage and voltage okay now tadi kita dah measure amperage now they want us to they want you to uh, measure the voltage so yang voltage ah baru boleh pakai ini lah so that means you have to change it to voltage Mode now is voltage. Uh, now it's voltage. But uh, this one ni salah eh. Sepatutnya voltage kena parallel dengan ni. Resistance. So, uh, dia nak LED, resistor and battery. So, you have to put your parallel tu dekat LED. Dekat resistance. And then parallel kan dekat uh, your battery, con battery ni. Okay. And then observe the value and include in the lab sheet. Export and rename the file with your student ID. So uh, macam saya tadi saya taruh part A lab 5 ni uh, ni dia suruh taruh awak ni student ID lah. It's up to you lah sebenarnya uh, saya tak kisah lah buat ni file name ni it's up to you. But uh, you have to answer exercise ni and also my question why bila saya tukar amperage ni saya put up here is 27.1 kat bawah pun 27.1. The kin is the resistance. Okay, anybody has any issue before kita proceed dengan part B? Uh, no, sir. No, no sir. sir. All right. So that means orang faham ni. Benda senang ni, insyaAllah. Okay, so uh, kita continue with part B, which is cloud storage. So this is basically just setting up your OneDrive and put your BRD file on your OneDrive. Okay, the problem here is that 
I, in order for me to understand this, I had already proceed and put and set up my computer for it. Lah. So once I've already set it up, there is no way for me to get back this uh, setup OneDrive login and whatnot. But uh, what I can tell you is that so what I can tell you is give me a second. Saya punya, saya punya never mind. My, my computer is a bit wonky today, I guess. So uh, this section here, I haven't had a chance to record, but it's supposed to be direct to the point. Uh, that means you just follow each steps here. Basically, you just type here OneDrive. If you haven't already installed it, uh, it will ask you to set it up. For me, I've already set up all my file here. Okay, uh, UITM have given me almost 50 tera, I guess, uh, size. So uh, that's why I can put my games, my videos, my movies, whatever not I want, I put it there. But for students, I think uh, at, at the very least, it's still much more than your Google Drive. Punya. If I'm not mistaken, Google Drive free is 15 GB. So I'm sure for students how much, but uh, I would think around that area also for, for, for OneDrive, sorry. So these steps here is basically set up, setting up your OneDrive. Uh, you have to put in your email address and then where you want to install it. For me, since my uh, SSD is C and I have a hard disk, uh, which is 4 tera. So I put my stuff here in the other, you know, in the other partition instead of C because SSD, you have to know. I think most of you pun tahu. SSD ni tak tahan lang. There's a finite amount of writings that you could put on your SSD. So untuk benda-benda penting macam ni, backup-backup ni, make sure put it on your hard drive, uh, hard drive which is your me mechanical drive. Uh, so uh, mechanical drive ni tak laju, tapi dia tahan sampai bila-bila. Provided you tak drop it lah. Okay, so for me, I put it in my D drive because it's my mechanical drive. Let open under mechanical drive. If you have more than one partition, chances are the other partition is your mechanical drive. So if possible, put any of your backup in the mechanical drive so that it lasts forever. Almost. Eh? Okay, and then... Uh, once the select next to accept the default change location one on the all of your file ready on demand screen oh no this is just setting up sorry i thought yeah so okay you are all set now so for me i'm able to see the onedrive uh, section uh, here under desktop oh, sorry sorry say about obs yeah Press my OBS. Yeah. To capture this PC. Ah, okay. So, ni boleh zoom in. Tak boleh kot. Tak boleh. Tak boleh. So, uh, uh, this is the one that I've mentioned. If you successfully set up OneDrive in your hard drive or your SSD, you will you will be able to see it here lah, on the left panel. For you, uh, if you log in using your UITM email, eh? if you create OneDrive using your UITM email, then you see it here. Uh, OneDrive University Technology Mora. But if you create your own, uh, apa your own email, then the OneDrive you you will only be able to see OneDrive and maybe your name, I guess, not UITM. Okay, don't mind this one. I know this is back when i was when i have no money so say download game but uh now this is dah beli dah kaya kan buat apa nak beli pirate pirate game lagi lah <laughs> uh, something okay and then uh you now have a white or blue icon uh, which is the one that tunjuk atas ni and you will shown as one drive university technology mara if you create your using apa ni 
uh, UATM punya ni. And also on your taskbar, if you drop it, uh, if you see your taskbar, there should be an a blue icon on maybe next to your speakers ke apa ke. Wi-Fi tu boleh nampak lah blue icon kat sini. Nampak tak mouse saya ni? Kita nampak je. Ha ni. Okay. So, uh, then after you've created your OneDrive, locate BRD file that you have created. So, I put my BRD file under download. And this one. And then I create cut or copy ke. Cut ke. Saya pakai cut lah sebab saya tak nak pakai dah pun lepas ni. And saya put into OneDrive by pasting it here. And this will automatically be down, uh, uploaded to OneDrive punya server eh. Tu je dia nak buat part B ni. Okay, so you have to screenshot here, everything here, and put it into your lab sheet. Okay, tu je. Part B senang. So, itulah. Malas nak bangun pagi. Pergi dulu malam apa semua. Baik, saya duduk office je. Okay, ada isu? Anybody ada isu in regards to part B? Magic sangatlah kalau ada isu ni. Boleh? Part B? OneDrive? Boleh, sir. Okay, alright, good. Okay, yang the other one pun senang juga, which is uh, Google Drive. Uh, this one again, saya pun dah ada saya punya Google Drive sendiri, which is, is it here? Ah, yeah, this one is my personal Google Drive, bukan UITM punya, sebab kalau UITM punya besar sangat, saya tak nak. Okay, one thing about Google Drive is that, uh, or, ni, or OneDrive, if you upload something on your online server, it will also be stored in your computer juga. So that means if, macam tadi, saya punya OneDrive uh, berapa, 50 tera, for example, if I upload a lot of things in my uh, online punya ni, if you don't set the parameters, chances are everything yang beribu-ribu tera tu, giga ke apa ke, will also be installed in your computer. So, there's no point lah except for apa, online punya ni lah, storage. But the reason why for me, personally like me, if I if I already had it in online, I don't want everything to be stored offline except for all the pertinent documents lah yang critical tu je lah. Tapi yang macam movie-movie apa semua tu dah down upload internet buat apa saya nak ni. Unless for, saya, kalau saya nak tengok, baru saya download. Uh, so that said, that's why I ask you to put in your mechanical drive also not because of just uh, longevity but also because practicality sebab kalau download terbesar your hard disk will be much better to handle that lah, instead of your ssd so that's why i ask you to put in your other drive not your c c file i mean this is just a talk lah. tak ada kena mengena dengan lab ni Okay, so uh, for Google Drive ni pun sama. Uh, the same with OneDrive. Basically, you download the Google Drive into your lab computer where then you'll be able to see it on the left panel here so that you can, instead of going Google Drive, going to Google Drive every single time, you can just access it from your uh, computer punya ni lah. So, offline ada, online ada. This sync. So, the same thing, download, I've already done this, so there's not much I can show it to you, but uh, it's just step by step punya ni. So, saya dah buat, so saya tak boleh nak revert balik, sebab nanti kan satu kerja nak padam semua, nak apa, nak sync balik, it's going to take some time. So, might as well you just follow the steps here lah. It's just download the Google Drive, login in, uh, apa, install. Log in to your Google Drive and then they'll sync, give it around 10, 15 minutes, then it will properly sync. And then you'll be able to see whatever that you have uploaded on the Google Drive on the internet. It will also be downloaded into your computer uh, locally. Okay. So the same thing, uh, apparently here, since we are already in Google Drive here, I'll change back to OneDrive where they want us to put the PRD file into the Google Drive. So for me, I'll just put it here, paste, copy, paste. And then upload and uh, if you, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Google Drive has already update their software. That means it won't automatically upload. So what you need to do, you have to 
personally typed it in. Ini ke ada dah. Drive tadi. Ah, uh, and then will it uh, once you type in drive, click drive, and then ah uh, you will be able to see this uh, green button here. So basically, this is uh, apa nama? Uh, it's linking or syncing to the online punya Google Drive, your Google Drive. So this is the newest update. So uh, I'm trying to show it to you now to show that the one that we have done just now by simply copy and pasting will not be uploaded online. So what you need to do, you have to turn on the drive syncing uh, program. Then will it uh, give you the green tick here to show that it's already in sync with the online. So let's say for example, now this is uh, my personal Google Drive. Let me open. Tengok lah, saya main game, main game juga. Tapi dapat PhD. InsyaAllah nak dapatkan IR. So there's nobody stopping you from getting what you want despite you doing what you want. Remember eh. Bukan nak saya nak suruh korang main game. Nampak? Whatever that you enjoy doing, keep on enjoying it. But try to find balance. Okay, ah, so this is my personal Google Drive. So... Uh, apartment Jintan, uh, Apartment Jintan, Aquaponics Project, Aquaponics Project. So everything is syncing here. So let me see if there is already the part A, let five. Has it been synced? Uh, I think not yet. Uh, but syncing, syncing, it's out of my control. But I think we can, ah, that's sync. So let's find it. Ah, yeah, this one, part A, let five. So, by simply copying from OneDrive tadi tu, saya paste to my local punya Google, uh, Google Drive now and then uh, since the newest update from Google Drive, uh, you can, uh, you have to turn it on, then only will it be syncing. Sync, nah. so, uh, previously, uh, when I use Google Drive, everything that I put or discarded from my local Google Drive will automatically be synced. I guess banyak ramai lah yang tak suka that feature. So you have to manually turn on the Google Drive punya apa nama tu? Uh, function tu baru disingkan. Uh, I think it's good juga sebab uh, apa nama private punya issues kan. So some people they want uh, different things that they want. So they want don't want to sync everything. So it's up to them lah. Okay. So that's all on part B Google Drive. So verify by making sure uh, the uh, the BRD file which ni part A like 5 tadi kita buat tadi tu dalam drive folder so nak buat nak make sure buka lah awak punya google drive tu kat online tu ten, tengok personally dah ada belum macam saya tengok dah ada dah siap lah part B ok uh, if web use web based google drive to upload PRD file to instructors drive ask your respective instructor for the link uh, this one uh, tak payahlah awak tunjuk screenshot awak punya google drive yang you have just created make sure there's a part b ni screenshot put it in your lab sheet that will be good lah for me okay sebab saya malas nanti kan bersepa-sepa uh, one thing about being a lecturer eh, uh, satu sem dua subjek tiga subjek kalau semua orang macam subjek ni satu report seorang so if every single one of you send me the file bersepa satu kerja saya nak Kadang-kadang tu satu satu minggu tu saya kena spend nak trace down korang punya kerja. And I don't like that. So for me, I make it simpler. Just paste this on your, if there is a place. Kalau tak ada, tambah je addendum bawah tu. Attachment in your lab sheet. Tambah ni, screenshot in your Google Drive. Bukan yang ni eh, bukan yang local file. Yang internet file tu. Eh, I guess better lah. Local file dan juga yang internet browser punya Google Drive tu. So that shows the sync just for the sake of official ni lah. Eh. I, I know korang tahu pun benda ni. Tak ada kecang pun. Okay, so part C. Hey, by the way, part B tadi ada isu. Google Drive and OneDrive. Anybody has any questions or complications that they want me to assist? Ada?
No sir. All right. Okay, kalau tak ada, then kita continue to the last part, which is yang Python ni, which is kita dah pernah buat Google Collab. So part C, cloud computing, I forgot where did I put my Google Collab punya. Let me set up jauh eh. Trying to find my Google Collab punya browser. Is it in Google Chrome or Firefox? Yep, Google Chrome. Eh, Firefox. Okay, let me turn on my OBS. Okay, so um, I guess we can open more apps. Uh, I guess we are... Uh, kita boleh proceed dia terus sebab yang Google Drive korang tadi tu, let's say for example um, tertutup pula give me a second ya, saya buka Google Google so more apps you can find Google Collab sepatutnya kat sini oh sorry, uh, kita kena buka Google Drive dulu so Google Drive and then more apps Ni buka. More. Oh, then you have to connect more apps from your Google Drive. Eh? Saya dah buka dah pun tapi tak apalah. Kita follow step by step. And then find here call collaboratory. And you found it here. Uh, you can install it, but for me, I don't want to install extra things because it's already uh, uh, available online. So what I would do is uh, just Google Collab and then get to Google Collab. And it should bring me to the one that uh, we have already done, Young Lab Python. Though. So for me, I don't to download it. I suka to online online. That said, of course, online, uh, downside the limitation dia, uh, kalau tak ada internet, jam lah korang. Uh, so, it's a good thing juga kalau boleh uh, download. But for me, since I, wherever I go, internet connection is good. I have the money to spend on good internet connection. So, I don't want to do, apa ni lah, buat apa bayar mahal-mahal, tapi tak pakai kan. So, saya pakai. So, that said, saya tak nak download lah. For you, if you want. Uh, maybe, yelah, saya faham zaman saya susah dulu pun macam tu juga student kan, kalau boleh nak yang redundancy tu to be safe in case balik kampung tak ada internet ke apa ke ha, so macam ni lah, uh, download lah but for me, uh, saya balik kampung ke, balik ke bandar ke, balik tengah jalan ke insyaAllah ada internet, so I malas lah nak download, saya pakai internet that said, uh, ini uh, we proceed once you, okay apa saya cakap seorang-seorang uh, kita proceed to step 4 which is to create a new project. So this is what a new notebook, this is what a project means interface would look like kalau saya padam ini. Eh. Uh, so saya padam lah. And then, uh, mana saya punya ni? Uh. Oh, dia pasang. Oh, dia buka yang ni. Silap, silap. Kalau login rasanya. Give me a second. Betul dah. Oh, ni nak buka. Padam eh. Okay, so uh, this is the new notebook. So if you download, cantik lagi lah kot. But for me, saya guna internet. So dia akan based on my Firefox punya rupa lah. But uh, if you download, you shouldn't be seeing this bookmark ke apa ke. Uh, it's up to you lah. So for me, I use web browser. So interface tu nampak browser punya interface. So a new notebook uh, should be open as shown. This is what the project main interface. So this is the main interface yang mana kita buat sebelum ni. 
the interface is composed of the following the top toolbar is the one that you see code text and whatever else other that's near connect and editing and then to rename the notebook click on this name and type the desired name uh, in the edit notebook so macam ni saya taruh uh, pipe c lab pipe again eh kalau nak bagi nama jangan ada space jangan ada simbol kat depan and make sure kalau nak ada space juga taruhlah simbol ni macam saya saya tak nak saya biar dia one shot and saya guna apa nak tengok cakap Melayu boleh not not because Melayu tu tak bagus it's because I need to practice English again so saya I have to speak in English this semester eh? okay so that's how you rename the file name so if you done that you can click uh, any place in the uh, main interface and then this will be saved lah. as shown here all changes saved so everything is saved which is the file name and then uh, click connect on the right side of the toolbar google collab will try to establish a connection with the cloud server if the connection is successful then the connect will change to green tick and the server specs so this is to make sure that uh, there is a server available for you to save your project so that's why you have to check first click connect if successful if there are servers to help you you'll be able to see this uh, ram and disk icon here uh, like for example here uh, there's a server dedicated for me i got ram uh, which is currently not being used yet and storage which which is as actually maximum is at 13 gb 15 gb is it oh sorry 100 one tera total of one tera so currently it's almost a quarter so i guess i've been saving quite a lot of things uh, in my google drive so okay we've completed that now you will now enter a trivial python code in the code window and then execute it enter the following two python statements in the code window so now what if you're smart you copy and paste this but since i'm not that smart it's like i like to type so i'll type it on myself uh, import time and then again this is just uh, python the one that we have uh, learned in the few Is it right? Yeah. A few experiments back. So the same type of codes. You just if you want to print, just print. Put there print. Don't, don't need print F. Like C programming too. Okay, and then uh, you have to execute the code. Click on the arrow on the left side of the code window. So just click lah. Give it a second. Now uh, you see since you put there time basically you're downloading time parameters from google so when you print out time so the construct time is monday november 29th and the time is in google right now in us i guess gmt it's 1 15 a.m in 2021 but uh, in malaysia it's already 9 15 so again this is more on the servers punya location or GMT punya time lah which is macam kita kita kena tambah 8 eh 6 tambah 8 rasanya so that's why ni 1 kita 9 8 tambah 1 9 correct me if I'm wrong eh but about time ni memang saya lemau sikit apa grid grid time difference Okay, after a while, you see the output underneath, which is in this case uh, the same lah. Monday, they put uh, on the date, the day itself, and then the the month, then the day, and then the time, and then only the year. So in this case, 2021, and uh, uh, today, lah. you can clear the output anytime by clicking the icon on the left side. So let's say you don't want this. Supposedly, you can click this, and then. Now it's clean. It's more on represent presentation. Uh, I mean, you can still run it. 
So basically you reset it and then uh, if you don't want to see it because you want to continue with the code, just press X. X tu dia akan keluar bila you hover over the output tadi tu. Okay, to add more code on your notebook, just hover the mouse on the bottom of the cell. When the code text appear, click on the code. So hover kat sini, so nak tambah code ataupun tekan your code atas ni. So nanti dia akan tambah satu, uh, apa nama? Cell satu. But since dia nak pakai macam tu, so kita tekan your code. It's the same thing, eh? nampak satu lagi cell. Okay, and then a new code cell will be added underneath the current cell. Next, we'll execute equation 5.1, which is this one. Click code button and write codes from figure 5.39. Run the cell and verify if the output is similar to 5.40. So 5.40. Oh, this one. So they nak plot kind graph. Include your coding and output in the lab sheet part C2. So uh, this one... Kalau macam saya, saya nak make sure code ni betul tak betul. So, what I would do, saya copy paste dia dulu. Okay, and then try run. Ada isu tak? Nope, tak ada isu. So, boleh terus pakai. Huh, so, senang sangat lah. But basically, what the code ni bukan apa? This lab part C ni is not because of want you to get the output here. It's more on how to play around with Google Collab which kita dah buat dah pun in part 3 tadi uh, set apa uh, part 3 pula lab 3 or lab 4 so uh, i think it's redundant lah for me so boleh lah copy ni paste dekat your lab sheet to show that you've done the work okay now but cerita tak habis lagi <laughs> during the develop okay sorry uh, just to make sure equation is x equals to sin theta so if you want to see uh, time amplitude and pace time. Yeah, hold on. Let me understand the code. Apparently, this is the amplitude equal to NP sin time. Okay, um, I'm not very familiar with the data that they are using here, but I guess this is the properties. And this is uh, the one that you're seeing this equation 5.1 is being defined here. Like amplitude equals to NP dot sin dot time because this is actually downloaded from the library themselves. So I couldn't say much because I haven't had the chance to play around with this library. But equation x equals sin theta ni, yang ni lah, amplitude equals to np dot sin time ni. So if I'm not mistaken, np ni, there should be some value which is defined in the library, which I haven't had explored. And amplitude is x, time is the theta. But np ni tu lah saya a bit blur sebab saya tak buka library ni. So library ni, everything here is actually can be open and can be understood but since I had, didn't have the time so saya tak buka lah uh, library NumP ni. So I, I guess now NP ni is a variable which uh, will produce this output lah nanti. Okay never mind on that but but basically what this code you need to do is just run it and then uh, snap pick this picture put it in your lab sheet and then uh, elaborate lah dalam your lab sheet tu nanti. Uh, basically to show that you understand how to use Google Collab. Okay, but before we end, uh, during the development of your project, you may have introduced a new non-unwanted cells in your notebook. You can remove such cell from your project with a single click. Click on the vertical dotted icon at the top right on your code cell. This one, vertical dotted. Oh, if you want to remove cells, like for example, this one, you want to remove it, then you can just, is it this one? Oh, okay. So that's it. I need. Dia dah tak panggil delete cells. Dia dah bagi gambar ni lah, trash. So you can just click delete. 
Itu je, itu je dia nak cakap, bukan yang atas ni, yang ni. Let's say for example, you accidentally click text and you don't want text here. So kalau yang zaman 2019 ni dia ada yang kalau if you click this drop uh, vertical dotted line ni dia patutnya ada kat sini tapi tak ada dah. Dia dah tukar jadi terus jadi gambar garbage icon ni. Tekan hilanglah dia. Okay, tu je dia nak cakap. Okay, so for the exercise, examine the output equation 5.2 and equation 5.3 which is 5.2. This is 5.1. Where is 5? Oh ni, 5.2 and 5.3. Is it the code in figure 5.2 replace XX with the last two digit of your student ID? So XX ni uh, your student ID. So that means exercise ni every one of you will be different from each other. So if I found in your lab report that one or two students have the same output, it shows that you are actually copying from each other. So I have the authority, it's my prerogative then to deduct how many marks that I want. Sebab ingat, your ID card sepatutnya berlainan between each other. So if XX ni surprisingly sama, even though ni saya tahulah awak meniru. So ni eh, saya saya bagi bagi tahu ni. So do this, replace XX with your the last two digits on your student ID, then show to me the result in your lab, lab sheet. Okay, and then discuss the limitation of cloud and drive. Compare part A with an actual experiment. Discuss the advantage and disadvantage. Okay, uh, this one, I want to see your own words. I I don't want to, ni lah. Uh, I don't want to give hints because benda ni is actually, uh, ni. cuma, if let's say you don't have the, what you call that, battery, coin battery ni. Sebab so, dia nak kena compare dengan actual experiment. Sorry, saya cakap Melayu balik. Uh, they want you to compare with your uh, the physical circuit but since MCO and what I uh, was so MCO pula since you guys are here tak ada pas dalam pasar kat sini maybe korang tak jumpa lah LED macam mana lagi uh, maybe you won't be able to find LED resistance and coin battery ni readily and also multimeter readily available for you so uh, I understood but that said you still need to uh, Uh, yeah, hold on, eh? ah, with an actual experiment. That said, um, uh, kalau tak boleh nak masuk lab. Uh, you guys are part three, right? Part four, part three. Part three. Part three sorry. Do you guys have uh, any uh, LED resistance lying around about you right now? Ada ke? No sir. Hmm. Nak masuk lab satu kerja pula. I don't think it's going to be feasible for you guys. So macam nak compare. Okay, this part uh, is going to be a bit difficult because um, some of you, uh, kalau ada kat sini pun, tak ada, apa, nak masuk lab pun, bukan senang. Um, nowadays and SOP, semua tu. Uh, tak apa, uh, let me think about this on the second discussion ni. Uh, or maybe saya discuss dengan kawan dulu, uh, what are the steps yang korang boleh buat. If not, then boleh abaikan lah kalau saya tak get back. Nanti boleh, boleh abaikan lah yang part number dua tu. But uh, number one tu, saya nak dengar, saya nak tengok dalam report awak. Hmm, okay, yang nombor dua ni, even though dia suruh awak compare with actual experiment, even if you didn't do actual experiment, I think you can visualize actually what are the disadvantage and advantages of doing it in the cloud compared to online. So that's it. You can... Uh, if let's say I don't, I didn't come back to you on how to do the actual experiment, uh, you can neglect the first part, but uh, the, the the actual experiment. But I still want to see you discuss on your the advantage and disadvantage of performing experiments in the cloud compared to la compared to physical lab. 
So this one, I still want to see it, except for the actual experiment until I get back with it. Okay, and then conclusion, uh, I have exposed to you the basic application of cloud software, cloud storage, and cloud computing. So we have completed that five. Are there any issues that you want me to clarify? Except for the real experiment, lah. And to say, get back to it Let me figure it out. But uh, for now, uh, let five spatu yang dah lah. Any issues? Want to me to clarify? Everyone's okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Kalau uh, kalau tak ada issue, there's no issue. Then tu je lah for our lab today. Just took us one and a half hours instead of four hours. So not bad for today. Uh, so submission again will be one week from today. Mm. Any kind of announcement so far? So far, none, but I plan to start. Itulah macam saya cakap tadi, saya nak tengok korang punya attendance and make sure ni. So that said, kalau saya ada contact awak regarding your attendance, make sure if you have proof, if you don't attend the class and you have proof, make sure to provide it to me so that I won't give your names to uh, court. Eh. Uh, for those yang attendance kurang daripada 80%, I have the justification to send your name to the martial court. Bukan martial court lah, apa nama? Discipline, disciplinary action court uh, in UATM. So, I will see how nanti saya akan tengok start the audit. But other than that, uh, I guess that's all for today. Uh, kita boleh end our session today with Tasbih Kifarah and Surah Walas.